Hi guys, so today's video is once again an outdoor video, which right now I have some outdoor projects that I'm working on, so that's kind of what you're going to see, but I'll be working in the fire pit area. It's down behind me. Um, it's an area that we had leveled uh, years ago, which around here, everything is on a slope. So if we do want a flat or a level area, we have to create it. It's not perfectly level, but it definitely functions as a, you know, a fire pit area where we can sit around a fire and even have some people there. It's not a huge space, but it definitely works for us. It is in need of a major makeover. I've been wanting to get to it all summer and haven't until now. So join me as I work down there and enjoy. So I'll give you guys a quick tour of the fire pit before I get to work on it. Um, as you enter the space, there's an old arbor here that I made years ago out of old screen doors. And there's a silver lace vine growing on top. Um, the arbor is still pretty sturdy, so I'll probably leave that and just trim the vine down a bit. I have a house wren just scolding away here, and it's not because of me, it's because of her. It's just funny how these little wrens, they trust us humans, but as soon as a cat comes close by, they are just scolding away. I guess they know their enemy, right? So the blue chairs here definitely have to go. I'm not sure what I was thinking years ago. I think they were on sale or something that I bought them at Walmart. And I'll probably just donate them to a thrift store since they're still in really good shape. Um, I had debated to paint them, but um, I have some other seating ideas for down here. So I think I'll just donate them. Uh, hopefully somebody else can get use out of them. There's a pretty cardinal sitting in the tree there. <laughs> hopefully you guys can see him. I don't have a lot of zoom on this camera, but so pretty. And if you guys ever want to see something that totally failed for me, it's this weird looking chair. I guess we can call it that. Um, I had made it years ago. It was supposed to be for someone else, of all things. Uh, they had ordered a rustic chair of sorts. And this is what I came up with, but I ended up making something else for them, thankfully. But it turned out more like a throne, and it's just a heavy chair. You can barely move it. I had intended to actually just use it as firewood down here. Um, I thought I'd just bring my saw down here and just cut, you know, pieces off as we're sitting here and just burn it. Um, and everybody kind of persuaded me to just leave it. Uh, people actually sit on it. Uh, it's the most uncomfortable thing ever. And as you can see, the boards are starting to rot. Uh, the seat is coming up. You might not be able to see in the video, but um, it's definitely in need of just being gone. And the wooden cable spool is falling apart, so that will go uh, back here. I'll probably just restack the wood, kind of straighten up that area. I love to see logs as seats for a fire pit area, and I may end up adding some new ones, um, but these are falling apart. And even with how everything looks down here, surprisingly, we still use this space. You know, it's still functional. Um, it probably looks kind of depressing, but uh, we love it down here. Um, the fire pit, you know, will stay. I'll probably just straighten up the rocks. Uh, this table back here kind of lost its function, too. Uh, the legs broke off uh, just the other weekend. Just haven't gotten around to, you know, getting rid of it. Uh, the boards are starting to rot. I'm kind of sad about it. It used to be my grandpa's work uh, table in his shop. Um, I had debated to try to save some of the boards. Uh, like up here, they're not too bad. Maybe just make something else out of it or a shorter table. I'm uh, not quite sure yet. And the flag will probably go back up on the deck railing. I had just put it down here over July 4th. We had an outing down here. And this uh, picnic table um, is still in really good shape as far as it's really sturdy. But the paint is really peeling. As, and I'm not really sure that I want this color down here. So maybe I'll just donate it or do something else with it. And the chairs over here, uh, same story. Not sure, do I just want to paint them another color and still use them down here or keep them that color? That would make a cute picture with a flag in the background. And over here I used to have a wooden flower box for years. And then the wood started to fall apart, so I kind of covered that up with stones. So I guess it was more like a stone flower container. And then I moved that when I transplanted the azalea down here. So I have to kind of work on this little corner here too. Uh, not quite sure. Again, I'll kind of decide what I want to do with it as I go. But to start out with, I'll probably just clean things up a bit, get rid of things I don't want anymore, see what kind of space I have, and go from there. 
I'm going to start out by restacking the wood pile and I think I'm going to stack it on the outside of the actual fire pit area here. Uh, lay a few boards down uh, above the, the stone and then start stacking the wood on there. And if I act a little skittish, it might be because I'm kind of scared that I'm going to see a snake. This would be the perfect place for them. Trust me, from past experience, I know they like areas like this, kind of undisturbed rocks and pieces of wood like this. area here is always kind of slick especially after it you know just rained and I thought a stepping stone might be a good idea found this nice flat one that I plan to use So I think I'm going to finish trying to straighten this wall here. Um, it's far from perfect. In fact, it really bothers me that it kind of dips in right here. I don't know, can you tell in the video or not, but um, I think what happened is being I had plants you know, in here, it kind of pushed my rocks out. So these should actually be set just a little bit further in, but it would have taken a lot of digging to do that. And right now I just don't have the time. I thought about asking John, but he's playing softball tonight. And I really wanted to finish this tonight, so I'll just leave it be. And I think eventually the cat mint will continue to grow along the wall, and maybe you won't even notice that. And I still have a lot of stones left over right here, and then in the fire pit area. 
and they're really pretty stones and I'm thinking of maybe putting a border along this edge here. I didn't get a video of this, but I ended up planting a few hostas and a sedum ground cover in here, along with some coral bells. I mulched the space with a leaf bark combination mulch. So the rest of the rocks I'm just going to pile up underneath the lilac bush. They're always going to be there if I ever need them for a project. I decided to keep the table and the benches and just repaint them. The only paint I have in exterior right now on hand is black. So black is what they're gonna be. I feel a little bit crazy. It's eight o'clock in the evening and I plan to still paint these tonight. I know I'm gonna be so happy tomorrow when I wake up and this is painted and I can continue to work in that space and not have to worry about painting them. First, I'll probably just sand the top of the benches and the table and kind of get rid of all the loose paint. To make matters worse, there's even some dark clouds coming up in the west, but I'm gonna risk it. Um, after all, you know, it's outdoor furniture, but hopefully the rain will hold off. And I feel like if I just have maybe 45 minutes, I can whip this. It took me right around an hour to prep and paint these pieces. Um, so impressed. Again, if you're looking for a good paint sprayer, I will link this one that I use down below in the description box. I love it. If it were ever to give out, I would get another one exactly like it. While I was painting the table, my camera battery died, so I didn't get the whole process uh, filmed. But you get the picture, basically just applying a coat of this dark gray or almost black paint. What I plan to do here is make a few simple folding stools that you can maybe sit on as you're roasting marshmallows by the fire. I've never done this before, so maybe it won't turn out, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Uh, what I have in mind is fabric seats, uh, wooden legs, and I can better explain as I work on it then kind of what I'm planning on doing. But for now, I have a treated two x four here, which that means it'll last much longer on the outside than just a regular two x four wood. And I think I might have enough with just this one, but if not, I do have another one down in the other shop. I can always go get that one, but I plan to get my height of what I want my stool to be. Start out by cutting my pieces to the right size that way, and then I plan to split the two by four pieces in half. That way I'd actually have enough for another stool. <laughs>
have my pieces of wood here ready to put together and there's eight pieces involved per stool and the legs which are these are 22 inches long and the width is again I just cut a two by four and half I know they're not completely square um, I believe they're around yeah, an inch and a half by closer to inch, inch and three fourth uh, that's just the measurement that came out that way you know being that I uh, you know, split it in half. If you would want to have exact, you know, squared little legs, you could always just shave some off from the one side. I just didn't bother to do that. I think these will work just fine. So the sides of the stools are going to be kind of an X form like this. Not sure can you tell in the video or not, but uh, what I plan to do is put a bolt through here, connecting these two pieces that they will still be able to you know, swivel like this. That way the chair is foldable. So this is kind of how the side of the chair will look very roughly. Almost need more hands here to hold everything, but the outside pieces, which would be this piece here, and then this piece, uh, that section of the chair is actually just a little bit wider than what the inside pieces will be here. So I needed to make my little leg braces that will come on the bottom part of the legs one is a little bit longer than the other and this will make sense as I put it together so the piece of wood that I'm going to put together first are the actual little braces that come on the bottom part of the legs and I want these little braces to be about four inches from the bottom of the leg I've noticed already with anything that I make even pieces of furniture four inches is always a good measurement to go by for your you know bottom shelves or in this case these braces and it's always a good idea to pre-drill holes that you're going to use a screw in that will keep the wood from splitting and I get questions sometimes why I use two drills uh, it's so handy the one has the drill bit and the other has the actual like screwdriver part that way I don't have to switch all the time and often these sets will come in sets of two and I will put the Amazon link for this drill set down below in the description box I could not be without this set here the measurement of the leg support pieces are the shorter one is 8 and 3 4 inches long and the longer one is 12 inches I'll put the measurement of all of these pieces down below in the description box in case you're wanting to make a stool exactly like mine it doesn't have to be this exact size. It can be bigger or smaller, but this is just how I'm making them. Again, just kind of guessing as I go here, but I thought that way if I have the measurement in the description box and you're wanting to make one, you know, very similar to this one, uh, you'll have it there to just, you know, copy it off. Here I'm drilling the holes for the bolt that is to go through these pieces, and I'm drilling them 11 and 3 4 inches from the bottom up. Here's what I'm using to connect the legs, uh, basically just a four inch bolt uh, with two washers, didn't get that in the picture, and then the nut. So before I put my fabric on these little stools, I will be applying a coat of polycrylic. So I found this pretty outdoor fabric at Zinc's Fabric. Uh, it's a store here in our area, and if you're ever in the area, make sure to check them out if you enjoy doing anything with fabric. They have all sorts of fabric in there and awesome prices. They do have a website, and I'll put their link down below in the description box in case you want to check that out. They have lots of different fabrics on their website also, but just to be clear, they don't have the outdoor fabric on their website, so you would need to actually come into the store if you're looking for a fabric exactly like this. For my seats here, I know I want my width to be around 14 inches, so I'll go ahead and cut that probably closer to 20 inches because I do want a fairly wide hem along the edges. I feel that will make the material stronger. So I know I want my width of my seat to be around 14 inches like I mentioned earlier. And as for the length, I'm not quite sure, so I'm just going to go ahead and just sew or hem this whole piece.
For those of you new to my channel, let me just quickly tell you a little bit about my sewing machine. Um, it is a Bernina 335. I absolutely love it and it was gifted to me by one of you. What happened is I took my old sewing machine into Chestnut Ridge Sewing. That's a place uh, here in our area that repairs sewing machines and they also have new ones. And I dropped my old one off. It was an old Genome from way back in the day. And of course I was in a hurry, you know, dropped it off and left again. And the very next week I get a call from Chestnut Ridge Sewing telling me that someone was in there that watches my videos and wanted to gift me this brand new Bernina machine. I could not believe it. I still feel so unworthy, but yet so blessed. So thank you again, whoever you are. Every time I use it, I think of you and think of the many good people that are out there and it just taught me a lesson on how I wanna be in my life. And that's what we're here for after all, is blessing each other. I could have done my sewing inside, but it's so much nicer back here on the deck. I love to be outside where I can hear the birds. They're just right beside me almost in the trees and there's a breeze going and it's supposed to get really hot later on, but for now it's really nice. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to attach the seat part here to the legs. As you can see, it's still not, you know, fastened without the screw head showing on top of the fabric. I kind of like this look of it just being rolled over this way and no screw in here. This side will be easy. I can just flip the fabric over, put the screw in, and then flip it back over to cover the screw head. I hope this is making sense. But as I come to the other side here, I won't be able to do that. So I think what I'll do is try to fasten the seat here to the legs by just putting a screw into the leg here, kind of diagonal up into this part here, just enough to hold it. I could even do it on both sides. And I'm choosing to do the narrow side here. As you can see, you know, the one side of the stool is actually more narrow than the other side. And the fabric will be covering more of the leg here than this side. So that way, if I choose to put the screw in diagonally on this side it'll be hidden underneath the fabric where you actually can't even see it. So I'm going to try to do that see how it turns out. If nothing else I can always just put a screw in the top here. Don't really like that but ideally that is what would hold best. So I'm going to work from the floor here. I think that'll be easier and I'm really liking the look of this black and white fabric to this wood. I don't know what you guys think but I think they're turning out pretty good but the true test will be to see if it holds out, if one of the guys sits on it especially. As I'm editing, I'm thinking this video is turning out to be much longer than I had anticipated. Feel free to skip ahead past all of this stool making in case you're not, you know, wanting to do this or it's probably kind of boring if you're not actually thinking of doing something like this yourself. But I thought for those of you that actually want to do this, I do want to include the details. So my next step here is taking my Craig jig and drilling a hole diagonal in here. And then I wanna screw these pieces together. One thing I wanna mention about these stools is for me, they're just a little bit high. I think I'd want them you know, a couple inches shorter, which I'm a fairly short person. For the guys, they're perfect. Uh, the other option is I could cut them at a slant, like where the leg meets the ground, you know, all the way at the bottom. Um, cut them you know at a slant that would also shorten them 
But for now, I think I'll just leave them. You know, they're gonna be down there by the fire pit on the gravel surface. Um, and they're gonna just sink down a little bit into the ground and they should be fine. A Craig jig is such a handy little tool to have around. What it does is enables you to drill nice holes diagonally into the piece of wood. Uh, without it, it would be almost impossible to get it you know, nice and even like the Craig jig does. Uh, the blue part you know, kind of guides the drill bit. You may notice in a few of these clips that I split the top part of one of the legs. I didn't drill my hole far enough back and deep enough. Uh, that's probably why that happened. I think it'll still be okay as far as it still has enough hold of that screw, but it just doesn't look as nice. I have some burning bush starts here that I'm going to dig out and see if I can find a place for them uh, down around the fire pit area somewhere. I was so impressed to find this black and white striped umbrella at Walmart. I thought it kind of goes with my noodle chairs. And then also the umbrella stand is from Walmart. I didn't get a video of this, but I ended up rolling another cable spool down here. My brother-in-law is an electrician and he always has some on hand and he usually gives them to me. It's such a handy thing to have in an area like this, especially if you bring food down, just another place to set stuff. I thought about painting or staining it. If I don't get around to it, I'll probably just leave it and it'll weather over time. These lights I also got at Walmart. This was such a fun project. I hope you guys were inspired by it. Here I am a few days later after you know filming this whole process. And last night we had a party down here. My son's 15th birthday was, and there's still some smoke going in the fire pit here. I could possibly roast a marshmallow if I wanted to. I still feel the heat. Uh, the weather was perfect. We had our meal down here, You know, sat around the fire, fun family times, played some games in the yard, finished it off with some fireworks that my oldest son orchestrated. Uh, it was just a really fun evening. Yeah. 
If there's one thing missing down here, I think it would be planters filled with flowers or greens. Um, I think maybe next year I would try to add a few of those. I don't want it to be so full that we can't have a group down here, but um, I think that would really fi fill in some of these spaces and just make it prettier. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all of you. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.